Let's say it happens here, the target five miles east of downtown Oakland, seven miles deep, 140 years from the last time the Hayward Fault exploded. Size, it's somewhere between a 6.8 and a 7. The first surface waves would radiate from the epicenter at a speed of 15,000 miles an hour. Areas in red are the very strongest intensity of shaking. Those are intensities of 9 and above where we'd see significant damage. Livermore, San Jose, Richmond, Fremont. This new animation from USGS shows high intensity shaking expected from a Hayward Fault earthquake. I'm Brian Hackney. Almost a century and a half after it last snapped, the Hayward Fault is primed to snap again. Tonight on Eye on the Bay, Dave Stelk has a quiz to see if you're ready for the next big quake. Love it. We'll find out where the fault lies. So we're pretty much walking on the fault. We're right along the fault. And we'll see why the influence of the Hayward Fault goes well beyond Hayward. This really is a whole Bay Area earthquake. The Hayward Fault runs for 50 miles from somewhere underneath San Pablo Bay to the northeast of downtown San Jose. The fault goes through the industrial center of the Bay Area. And this is an indication of the presence of the fault, this crack right here. We've seen it break roads, offset curbs, right? And it goes directly through that building. And the Hayward Fault is really the most highly populated fault in the United States. So what's it like to live with the fault in your front yard? Phil Howard knows. Phil! <laughs> good, mo good morning, Brian. I've known Phil for a while now because every time I come to do a story on the Hayward Fault, Phil's still living. You've been here since 63. That's, that's correct. Of course, the fault had been here for millions of years before Phil's front yard was planted on top of it. Things are still moving. Are they? Offsets in the curb, cracks in the street, indications the fault is on the move. Well, do we have any visual? Yes, we do. Oh, you do? Oh, show me. Brian, this is all glued. It's just a powerful, powerful adhesive, but it's moving. Not that Phil expects the continental plates to be held together by glue. When you bought the house in 63, yes. you, they had no idea the Hayward Fault came through here? If they did, they didn't tell us. That's probably because geologists of the time didn't know the fault crept here. But around the time Phil moved into the neighborhood, David Schwartz was graduating from high school in Queens. He would get his PhD in geology from the work that he did in Guatemala. With the USGS since 1985, David Schwartz is our guide tonight to the Hayward Falls. This set of cracks is the Hayward Fault. Where I'm standing here, this is 20% of all the movement between the North American plate and the Pacific plate passing through my legs on this one narrow zone. But this isn't the whole story. The Hayward has a characteristic that we call fault creep, whereby the fault is moving all the time. It's just chattering away like this. Eventually, this fault is gonna move in a larger jerk. It may move five or six feet. And when that happens, we're going to have our next big earthquake on the Hayward Fault. You know you got an anniversary coming up. Not you personally, but the Hayward Fault. 140 years since the last time it really went. Oh, thanks a lot. How big? Oh, you know, it's got enough energy stored to spring a six and a half. That'll hurt us. In 1868, only 265,000 people lived in the Bay Area. 12,000 people lived in Oakland. They had already felt 11 earthquakes in 1868, but they had never felt anything like what happened at 7.53 a.m. Wednesday, October 21st, 1868. This 1868 Hayward earthquake was so powerful, the Sacramento River totally changed directions and emptied, became dry, and then it washed back in a two-foot wave. There, there was massive damage. Hayward the worst, almost every building was knocked off its foundation. San Leandro, massive damage. Mission San Jose, the church collapsed. Roads buckled, Telegraph Avenue um, was like this. 33 miles of the fault ruptured. 
there were more than 30 aftershocks. The oldest pioneer in San Jose said there had been nothing like this. And he said, we thought the world was coming to an end. For four decades, it was known as the Great Quake, until an even greater quake came along in 1906. 140 years have passed since the last time the Hayward snapped. And on rough average, the Hayward snaps around every 140 years. It could really could happen any day, any hour. What are you gonna do? Move? Well, you could. I don't want to. It's a good place to live. Yeah, it is. What do you do, Brian? What do you do? You get ready. Yeah, that's about it. So when we come back, we'll have tips about how you and Phil can get ready for the next big quake, as well as the fastest tour of the Hayward Fault when Eye on the Bay continues. Welcome back to Eye on the Bay. You're looking at a visible trace of the Hayward Fault 140 years after it last snapped. I'm Brian Hackney. In a minute, we have a quake prep quiz. But first, do you know what they did after the 1868 quake split the earth open for 30 miles? They built the East Bay right on top of it. This is the trace of, of the Hayward Fall. And this trace on the ground is this trace from high above. The creeping fault slices right through living rooms. These homes are going to be severely damaged the next time the Hayward moves. The fault continues here through Fremont Central Park, and you can see the offset curves, the cracks in the road. Not that many people would even know it. I would guarantee you that that person has no idea that they just crossed the Hayward Fault. Love it. The fault continues very close to the intersection of Rocket Drive and Paseo Padre Parkway, where we're standing right now. And you can see the fault right over there. This apartment is directly over the Creeping Trace. There's a real problem here. I really don't think I would like to be in there. You remember what happened to some houses during that last earthquake? In 1868, the, the population of the East Bay was very small. Now we have two million people living directly on top of the fault. Downtown Hayward, we're just off mission, and this is an indication of the presence of the fault, this crack right here, right? Right, and it goes directly through that building. That's why the wall is bent. The fault goes through it. So the far side is being pushed north. And this nearby retirement home? It's right on the fault. Along the length of the fault, there are roughly 400 buildings that sit directly on the fault. It doesn't worry you guys, I mean, to, to work in it? No, really. No? <coughs> yeah, in the fault's no big deal. Fault's no big deal. Well, I think that's because these people haven't experienced a large earthquake, and if they really had, they wouldn't take this so lightly. Time for a break, and a few questions about what happens right after a big quake. For instance... First, they're going to close all the bridges, public transportation, buses, BART will be disrupted. It's just going to be very, very hard for people to get around initially. I suppose the train service would also be interrupted because it goes right across the tracks. Airports, how are airports going to do well? Oakland Airport does not do well. It's shut down for a while. How long could it take you to get home? It could take me a day. Just hope you're not here when it happens. They didn't know the fault was there when they built it? Well, when they built it, they knew there was a Hayward Fault, but they really had no appreciation for what an active fault was, what it could do to a structure. Memorial Stadium is getting a retrofit. And if the quake hits before the retrofit's done? I wouldn't want to be in the stadium. Finally, after slicing Kensington and El Cerrito. So this is where it ends. Yeah, we're at Point Pinal, and this is where the Hayward goes offshore into San Pablo Bay. And in a sense, it's the official northern end of the Hayward Fault. And we'll tell you how to get ready for the next time it snaps with a quake prep quiz when Eye on the Bay's look at the Bay Area's most dangerous fault continues. Okay, we've all been told what to do to prepare for the big one when it comes. You know, we can't be told often enough, so log on to our website to make sure that your earthquake kit is freshened up. But 
What do you do the very moment, say, the Hayward Fault starts to slip? Do you know there are decisions you can make in less than a second that can save your life? For example, it's the middle of the night, shaken awake by an earthquake. What do you do? Now, should you jump out of bed and run to the nearest doorway? Brace yourself. Or why not just roll out of and then under the bed? Or do you just stay in bed? Correct answer? Just stay in bed. Except, cover your head and neck with a pillow. That way you're less likely to be injured by falling glass or debris. An earthquake's no walk in the park, but say you and the fam are having a picnic in the park and kind of like drunk Uncle John, the Hayward Fault decides to go off and ruin things. So, what do you do? Do you run and crouch below the nearest and tallest tree? Or do you simply just curl up into a ball right where you are? No. Now, the right thing to do is to go to the nearest open space and then drop to the ground. Otherwise, you can die from or get injured from falling trees, stoplights, or power lines. Okay, how about this? You're at the beach, the big one goes off. What do you do at that very moment? Now, the intuitive thing is just head toward the open water. It's just water, it can't hurt you, right? Actually, that's a bad idea, and I'll tell you why. If by chance the quake is not centered along the Hayward Fault, but instead somewhere off our vast coast, there could be a tsunami. So if there's a quake while you're at the beach, get to higher ground and stay away. So you're sitting here at home, nice and relaxed, and then the Hayward Fault decides to go haywire and your home shakes so much that it suffers some moderate damage. What do you do? So, the first thing you wanna do is turn off the gas to your house. Wrong. Unless you absolutely smell gas, leave it on. Let the gas flow. It can be weeks or even months before professionals can come out and turn the gas back on using correct procedures. Okay, next scenario. You're driving down the freeway when all of a sudden you get a flat tire. Except it just feels like a flat tire. You realize it's actually an earthquake. So here you are driving 60 miles an hour down a bouncy road. You gotta decide right then and there, what are you gonna do? Now, should you step on the brakes? Or should you speed up to get away from the traffic around you? Or should you go to the nearest overpass and take cover? Or how about this, just pull over and stay in your car. So all you have to do is pull over at a clear location away from any overpass and just sit there with your seatbelt fastened and wait for the shaking to stop. Okay, final scenario. After the quake, you don't have any water and you didn't pack any in your earthquake supply kit, so what's a good source of potable water? Okay, so what about the swimming pool or the spa? Absolutely not. Don't you remember that one weekend when the Morgans, the next door neighbors, partied in here? If your water is off, you could drain some water from your water heater or melt some ice cubes out of your freezer. Or get this, you can drain the water from canned vegetables. Now, vegetables are packed in fresh, sterile water, and despite the color, you can be rest assured the Morgans haven't touched this stuff. So it's important to be prepared, yes, but it's also important to know what to do in the moment. If you want the complete answers to our quick quake quiz, log on to cbs5.com slash eye on the bay. I gotta go. Good luck, Dave. Nicely done. Now, what have we seen tonight? We've seen a major active fall pass through one of the most populated parts of the United States. We've seen it break roads, offset curbs, go through commercial buildings, go through residences. When it produces its next 1868 or larger earthquake, we're going to see unprecedented damage 
from an earthquake in an American city. So to be sure you're ready, another great website is 1868alliance.org. They're one of CBS 5's partners in making sure that we all get up to speed on getting ready. Hope you are. For now, I'm Brian Hackney, and that's Eye on the Bay for tonight. See you next time.